Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with creative cultivator and licensed professional counselor, Mari Reisberg. She is a therapist, performer, podcast host of the Sustaining Creativity Podcast and Creativity Cultivator. She holds a BFA in acting from the University of Hartford's Hart School and an MA in Somatic Counseling Psychology dance movement therapy from Naropa University. She currently splits time between the traditional 9 to 5 world as the director of utilization review and internship programming for a substance abuse treatment center and her own sustaining creativity business where she works one-on-one with performers and non-performers to grow, sustain, share, and transform creativity into their lives. It's a great story. Enjoy the interview. Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking a minute out. Yeah, nice to meet you too. So before we get into your life and and what makes you who you are, I want to know, first and foremost, the last three years we've lived through a pandemic, and I'm curious, it's affected us all in different ways. How did you make it through COVID-19, especially now with the world waking up, and how has it changed the way that you both live your life and conduct business now? Oh, my goodness. Big questions. Um, Well, the past three years, so I am a therapist, so my COVID-19 experience was very different from the rest of the world. My life didn't really stop. Um, I work in addiction recovery, and so it got really busy, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I imagine, yeah. Um, yeah, it got really busy, and at the same time, I recognized I still needed to have my own creative outlets, and so I decided to transition the other work that I was doing around sustaining creativity. I had created a program for performing artists that I would tour around the country to various universities in their graduate and undergraduate acting and dance departments. And COVID-19 changed that. You know, everything went online. And so I decided to start my own podcast called Sustaining Creativity. And I wanted to continue the creativity conversation. And the transition to starting a podcast allowed me to start interviewing people from around the world about creativity, what it means to them, how they use it in their life. And I started talking to people who felt like they would classify or call themselves created. I talked to people who did not believe that they were creative in the beginning of our interviews and by the end felt like they were. Um, So yeah, it was a time of exploration and deepening into my own creative research and creativity experiences while still working a full job as a therapist for in the addiction recovery field. So let's get to the essence of exactly what you do daily. And I want to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. And one of the kids looks up at you and asks you, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? Yeah. So I do a lot of things and I wear a lot of hats. And I primarily am a therapist. So I talk to people about the challenges that they're experiencing in their life. They, um, you know, it could be day-to-day challenges, it could be loss and grief challenges, it could be transitions in their life. I also am a creativity coach, so I get to support people around reclaiming and awakening and playing more in their life with creativity. I also sing and act and dance, so whenever I have the opportunity to get on stage and perform, I will. Um, And then I host a podcast where I get to talk to people from around the world about what it means to them to be creative. So when you were in the third grade, what was your dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? When I was in the third grade, I wanted to be a wedding coordinator or an Olympic gymnast. So obviously there's a lot of things that you're doing now that's different from that. Are you happy with how everything turned out? I am. I feel like I have been able to do a lot of the things that I had wanted to, especially as a kid. Um, I was a gymnast for several years. I was also a trapeze artist for several years. I um, 
Well, I wasn't a wedding coordinator. I had an organization business when I lived in New York City. Um, I have worn many hats and done many things. I've been a nanny. I've worked in restaurants. I've taught voice lessons. I have, you know, gone back to school and got my master's in somatic psychology and dance movement therapy. I have been a mindfulness and meditation instructor. I have been a tango dancer. I've done a lot of amazing, wonderful things in my life. And I think it's all led to me doing what I am doing today. So everything that you are begins in childhood. And I'm curious, there's seeds that are planted. What were the seeds? Talk to me a little bit about where you were born and raised, how those seeds have grown into who you are today. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Portland, Oregon, in a very free spirit, hippie family. I grew up with a 30-foot labyrinth or sacred geometric walking path in my front yard. And when I was three years old, my parents enrolled me in trapeze school. And I like to say I essentially grew up in the circus, doing physical theater, learning how to walk on stilts, ride unicycles, juggle, aerial dance adventures. Um, street performers, <laughs> that world was very much a part of my childhood. Um, I also went to a Waldorf school where we were doing a lot of performing and a lot of art and learning all of our our lessons through story. So it was a very unique educational experience that I had as well. And I was always encouraged to try new things, to try things that I wanted to do, whether it be a dance class or starting a garden or painting or drawing or playing a sport. Um, so I feel very fortunate to have grown up in a family that really supported passions and dreams and that was really cultivated in my life as a child and I was encouraged to try different things step out of my comfort zone and I I really did that as a kid and felt like I had this awesome awesome life so I'm curious Who's been a hero or role model for you in your life? A hero or role model? Oh, my goodness. I feel like I've had so many in my life. I think a lot of my teachers um, in trapeze have been role models and the people who really encouraged me to find play and not be afraid of looking silly or goofy. Um, so a lot of my friends who are clowns, I just think are amazing, amazing humans um, who are now doing like Clowns Without Borders or went to clown school and their ability to kind of pull out of you the inspiration of play or that it's okay to be silly and goofy and I think those are the people I really look up to people who don't take themselves super seriously I think other people in my life would say wow you do take yourself seriously but I like to believe that the people I look up to don't take themselves very seriously um, they're willing to look foolish and willing to be really curious and say I don't know something and find the answer um yeah i like I think, that answer yeah okay <laughs> yeah i do i like it so i'm curious i'm going to up the ante a little bit if you could meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them who would it be Ooh, who would i want to spend some time with on the planet right now oh my goodness um that is such a great question i feel like there are so many people that I would want to spend time with on the planet right now. But the 
like the person that comes to mind is Lizzo. Just right. like her her story and how she encourages others and the diversity that she brings to all arenas she participates in. Um, yeah, I just think she's an incredible human and I would love to spend time with her and hear what she has to say about creativity and what it means to her. And yeah. So the one thing that's good about life as we get older is we accumulate wisdom and we learn from mistakes and we just we, we get to a better place. And I'm curious if you had a dream tonight and ran into the younger version of yourself, say in your 20s, and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on what you've lived and the wisdom you've gained, what would you tell your younger version? What would I tell my younger self? Um, don't take things so seriously. <laughs> It's okay to have more fun. Um, it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to it's okay to have a little more freedom and not be so strict and structured. So the one thing too about our lives is every day we wake up we have these motivating forces. There's something inside us that makes us do what we want to do. What is that for you? What motivates you and gets you through the day? Oh, creativity motivates me and gets me through the day. Coming, just getting up and getting dressed. I'm like, oh, how do I want to feel today? How do I want to present myself to the world? Um, what clothes will help me do that? Or what accessories will help me do that? I mean, creativity really motivates my entire life. How I interact with people how I show up for myself, how I show up for others, how I'm a therapist, how I am a creativity coach, how I clean my house. You know, creativity is something that I feel is like oxygen to me. It so fuels me. The more I talk about it, the more energy I have. Um, so, oh, yeah, creativity really motivates me in my life these days. <laughs> so what's been one of the best client responses, fan letters you've ever gotten in your life? Oh, my gosh. Um, I think one of the best ones, I mean, when – so I was working with a client who was feeling really stuck in career path and – knew they wanted to make a change, but wasn't quite sure how. And in a very seemingly short amount of time, they were able to shift how they were kind of viewing their life and look at it through a more creative lens and were able to share with me that they translated that into so many other areas of their life. They ended up applying and getting a new job, they started to have a different relationship to exercise than they had ever had in their life. They had a different relationship to food, to parenting, to just how they had a happier existence. And I just, I love hearing how creativity supports more joy in people's lives and really you know, creativity can transform every area of your life. And I love when people finally experience that and then get to share it with me. So speaking of creativity, what has been the painting or the book or the album that has consistently motivated you or inspired you? Oh, consistently motivates me or inspires me. I'm in terms of like a book. Um, there is, oh gosh, there are several books, but one that I really love is, um, Twyla Tharp wrote a book called The Create, Creative Habit, Learn It and Use It for Life. And 
my favorite part of that is the creativity or creative autobiography and just like really going through your life and examining creativity in it and things that you're really proud of, things that you're really challenged by, good ideas you have, terrible ideas you've had, just taking stock of your creative life. I, I love that piece. Um, and then Sean McNiff, he is, oh my goodness, he wrote a book called Trust the Process, An Artist's Guide to Letting Go. And that book just, trusting the process, easy to say, hard to do. <laughs> so I constantly come back yeah. to that. Um, and I, I think that reminder of trusting the process, and I think as I get older, that trusting the process experience changes and shifts and means different things to me at different times in my life. And that reminder, I think, is is one that I continue to grow and learn from each and every day. So everyone out there has a perception of you, an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, you know, colleagues, clients, but you lived your life. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm awesome. <laughs> First and foremost, <laughs> I think I think I am a person who loves life, who is incredibly positive. Doesn't mean I don't have off days or challenging days. I absolutely do, but most of the time I have a very positive outlook. I'm grounded. I have a lot of um, life experience more than people probably recognize. Um, I really love my life. I love how creative it is. I, I don't know that a lot of people say they love their life. I think oftentimes we're constantly loving part of our life and other parts we want to change, but I truly love the life that I have. And I love being able to live it as fully as possible, whatever that means for me on the day that I am living it. Um, I think I am a very compassionate and empathetic person. I love listening I, to other people. I love stories. I, I love bouncing ideas off of each other. I love being a part of a team of people. I, I love being a team player, but I also enjoy being a leader. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of myself for everything that I've accomplished and all the things that I've done. And I'm excited about all the things that I have yet to do that I'm looking forward to. That's excellent. I love that answer. So, for anyone out there that wants to learn more about you and your world and anything revolving around it, where's the best place on the web to go? The best place is sustainingcreativity.com. You can find my website. Podcast is there. And then I'm on all platforms, social media platforms at Sustaining Creativity. Um, you can find the creativity adventures that I take on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. Um, and I'd love to connect with people. If you have creativity questions, reach out, shoot me a message or leave a comment and I absolutely check them and pay attention. Wonderful. This has been great. Thank you for opening up. Best of luck with everything. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, music, and more from around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. You can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and until next time.